Hello everyone, in this video we're going to cover curve normalization. Curve normalization can be a useful tool when working with large projects where you have a variety of well log data that comes from different vendors and from different tool generations. So in Dynomics we offer uh, three different types of uh, log normalization. Uh, so these are illustrated here. The first is our mean shift uh, and essentially uh, what it is we do is we identify uh, a midpoint of our data in our key well and then we'll shift our target wells midpoint so that it matches the midpoint in our key well. Uh, we also offer a stretch and squeeze so we identify uh, two points on the distribution from our key well and then we will take those same points on the distribution in our target well and stretch and squeeze those so that they match our key well. Uh, and then finally, we offer a three-point normalization. And with our three-point normalization option, it's kind of an asymmetrical stretch and squeeze, but we'll identify low, medium, and high points in our key well. And then we'll uh, make the necessary adjustments so that in our target well, we are now aligned with our key well. Uh, in general, um, the simple scale, which is the stretch and squeeze operation, is one that you'll most commonly uh, find that you will uh, be working with. So now let's jump to the software. Okay, so here we are in the platform and you can see that uh, once again we have uh, what's called my new project that we've been working on open and we are on our key well and you can recognize this from the fact that uh, we have the key well designation beside the active well. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to our module selection menu and we're going to select curve normalization. So it's important to remember in Dynomics that we do the normalization relative to the key well. And this is one of the reasons why it's very important to choose a key well that has a uh, distribution that you think is representative of your data. So we come here to our menu. And so, for example, if we wanted to normalize our gamma ray curve, we would say... Uh, we choose the option that we want and we're going to choose simple scale in this example and when we choose simple scale we see that it brings up uh, additional parameters for our low percentile and our high percentile now remember these are the percentiles in our key well that we're going to normalize our target well to so these are not absolute values this is the p10 and the p90 of our gamma ray distribution so you'll notice that when I set this, nothing changed in our key well. And that's because the key well is not being normalized. The target wells are being normalized to our key well. So if we click on the next well here in our well list, what we can see is that now the gamma ray has, uh, has been modified. So we can see that our original gamma ray had values on the order of uh, around in this area around 100 and we can see that our normalized gamma ray has a value of around 84. So we can see that we have about a 15 uh, unit shift here. Now if we want to evaluate this on a uh, on a broader scale across our project uh, there are a couple of ways we can do that. So first of all we can go to our map and we are going to click on show map properties here and let's uh, Let's choose our, um, come down here to the bottom of our list and we're going to choose the gamma ray normalization RMS. So this is a root mean squared of how much the gamma ray has been shifted in each of the wells. We're going to select that and we're going to select the zone that we want to show that for. And as we do this, we'll see that our jobs window pops open and it tells us that it's now running the job to calculate this map. Uh, while that is underway, I'm just going to minimize that to get it out of the way. We can also come here to our cross section and we can see that, uh, that we have a cross section drawn here. Um, right now we're on a triple combo template, which uh, isn't really gonna help us with our QC. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our uh, template selection. We're gonna say gamma ray normalization QC. And now the cross section has drawn itself. So we're gonna move over here to the left side of our our uh, cross section and we're also going to flatten our cross section on, uh, on let's say the Alston chalk and we can come in here and we can zoom in on this cross section and we can take a look at how the gamma ray 
uh, has been normalized. And so in general, when we see a shift uh, that's blue, that's been shifted higher, and, uh, and red shading is a shift to the lower. So here we can see that in these wells, which are down in the southern portion of our trend, we can see that the gamma ray has had a relatively small shift. Uh, here we can see some of the logs have had almost no shift at all, and some have had a quite large shift. Uh, since a majority of these uh, wells are blue, uh, sorry, I accidentally uh, clicked on a uh, track there. Um, th this would suggest that a lot of these wells um, have gamma ray values that were lower than our key well. Here we can see a well where the stretching and squeezing has resulted in slightly uh, lower values than our key well. So that's one way you can, you can do the QC. Uh, the other way you can do the QC is now that our map has finished mapping here, uh, let's go back to our well log, for example. So up here, uh, the, the well that we clicked on in the list, uh, we see that it's active, and we see that it has a, an average shift in the Alston chalk of just over 20 units. Um, so, you know, we may want to go in and, and determine if that shift uh, is actually representative and, and justified. Uh, you may also want to go in and identify if there's any wells where we see a particularly large shift uh, relative to the other wells, and then we might do some QC work on that. Of course, you can, uh, you can always change the normalization on a well-by-well -well basis. So for example, let's say I decided this well should not have been shifted. So now what I can do is I can come through and I can uh, on this well, note that I'm no longer on the key well. When I go to my well list, I am not on the key well. And so I could come in here and I could say no shift on this well. And then you'll notice that the normalization is, uh, is undone. And if we want to update our map here, we just hit refresh and this will do a local grid refinement on our, on our map here after a very brief calculation period. And so now we can see how our map is updated and we may feel more comfortable with this uh, as, we, as we now see a smaller normalization. Um, there are other ways that you may want to QC whether or not a normalization is justified. So we can also look at, for example, our, uh, our average gamma ray map. So we're gonna say average gamma ray final and so remember, this right now is showing us our, uh, our normalized uh, gamma ray. And so what we can see is that we can see a couple of uh, clear bullseyes on our map. So to address this, what we may want to do is come down here and select that particular well and look at uh, what's, what's happening. And what we can see is in this case, you know, we have very little log data in the, uh, in the Alston chalk, and so that's probably not a valid point. So we could come down here and we could omit that point from the map. And let's also take a look at this value that looks to be a little bit errant. And here we see that there has been a, uh, a large shift to higher values. And we see this is creating a bullseye on the map. So this is probably not desirable behavior. So once again, on this non-key well, we're gonna change that to none and we're going to redo our calculation. It's going to make a local refinement here and a local refinement here. Okay, and now our map is updated and it's rescaled itself. And now we can see that we have, uh, you know, data that has a much tighter uh, range overall. Um, and we can see that the two areas that we fixed uh, no longer contain large bullseyes. We can also go in and uh, once again, take a look at our uh, normalization RMS map. And what we see now is that overall, the normalization ranges are significantly smaller. So that is how normalization is done and QC'd in the Dynomics platform. And as always, uh, remember to save your work and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.